What's up? How are you guys this weekend? Today we are revisiting the carnivore diet, taking a look at a recent video with Jordan Peterson, who is one of the original kind of uh, mainstream influencers that made the carnivore diet popular ooh, probably four or five, six years ago now. But you know, one thing to keep in mind is anytime something gets super, super popular, there is an agenda behind it. In the case of this, you know, it seems like the anti red meat propaganda works too well and people are always inclined to save money. So, uh, you know, the Cattlemen's Association had to uh, pull a few tricks out of their sleeve to keep red meat sales reasonable. And I guess the best way to do that while weakening the entire population is to only have a small percentage of people consume an incredibly large amount of meat and not high quality at that. But you guys know uh, I was carnivore for almost eight years, completely destroyed my liver. I've referred to it as a band-aid for health solutions that will eventually turn itself into uh, poor liver function and organ failure. So let's see if uh, his experiences so far and what he's saying is indicative of that. Uh, I will say, at least in this photo, you know, probably the only mainstream carnivore influencer that actually has like visibly low body fat levels on their face. Because whenever you see someone that's like bloated or not really, really lean and skinny claiming they're following a carnivore diet, it's pretty much a guarantee they're lying because it's hard to sustain body fat on only protein. Because I never imagined in my wildest dreams, number one, that you could just live on meat, number and number two, that it would have such a salutary effect. Guy lost 52 pounds in seven months. I went from 212 pounds to 165, which is exactly what I weighed when I was 23. That if she only ate beef, then all of her immunological symptoms disappeared. The diet has actually been rejuvenating for my wife and I. Like its effect on muscle tone has to be seen to be believed. And so I've only been eating meat for beef fundamentally for almost five years now. And I've talked to hundreds of people and we've had messages from thousands of people showing that this is first of all, radically effective as a weight loss strategy and also seems to produce remarkable effects on the so yeah, I mean, eating carnivore is healthier than a standard American diet. And then depending on the quality of the carnivore diet foods you eat, that dictates how good it actually is. You know, a big difference between eating like conventional pork versus conventional beef, even just on the conventional side, than versus going high quality versions. Uh, but saying it's an effective weight loss diet is kind of a lie because there are some people that go carnivore and when they only eat like large amounts of conventional feedlot beef, they actually gain weight. They don't lose weight. So got to be careful on that. General disease symptom front. Back in November of 2021, there was a study published by a Harvard group, but they followed 20, they assessed 24, 2,500 people who had been on a carnivore diet for six months and showed something approximating a 90% reduction in all disease symptoms. And it's the only scientific paper I ever read where the surprise of the researchers was palpable between the lines in the, in the scientific writing. Because, you know, in a scientific article, all that emotion, negative or positive, is pretty much ironed out. But these people were so shocked by what they found that it couldn't help leaking into the document. And so, well, this has been quite surprising to me because I never imagined in my wildest dreams, number one, that you could just live on meat, number, and number two, that it would have such a salutary effect. So for me, I lost 52 pounds in seven months. I went from 212 pounds to 160. I mean, say, saying it removes all diseases, you know, will it help certain lifestyle and immune conditions depending on the type of carnivore diet you follow? Yes, but to just blanket that over everything, it's it's kind of... Kind of hard to say. which is exactly what I weighed when I was 23. And I've maintained that weight since. I can put on muscle mass with no problem, even though I'm 62. I had a host of inflammatory conditions, some of which were quite serious, including peripheral uveitis, which sometimes blinds people in my right eye. And it disappeared completely along with psoriasis and gastric reflux disorder. And interestingly enough, um, gum disease, which is technically incurable, 
which is linked to cardiovascular degeneration and which has gone away 100% in my case, according to multiple measures that my dentists have taken. And so when I've talked to many people who've lost like 100 pounds in a year, you know, because they come to my talks and who are just... Definitely some degree of sugarcoating. You know, there are people who do go carnivore and they either gain weight or they actually get health problems, whether it's a histamine intolerance or more gut issues. Beside themselves, so to speak, as a consequence of experimenting with this diet. So, well, so that's the story. It's very strange. I don't talk about it that much because I'm not a nutritionist and because I'm still shell-shocked by it. But I'll tell you, it's something to be 60 and to have the same essential body morphology that I had when I was 23. And that had all disappeared for me. All right, so a little, little bit of uh, gold coating, a little bit of exaggeration. Uh, I do find it funny that he goes like, oh, I'm not a nutritionist, as if you're like not the, what's the saying? Not the show pony, the golden boy for uh, promoting the carnivore diet now. And the irony in like even giving credit to dietitians or nutritionists when, you know, they promoted like stands in American diet related nonsense for so many years. And now they're on to like IFYM if it's your macros, you know, the dietetic association, all the nutritionist degrees, not one of them are correct. Not one of them are correct. You know, there's a reason I've never, you know, promoted myself as a nutritionist, as a dietitian, as a doctor is because my understanding of associating yourself with those people, it's not cut and dry, not clear, 100% honest, transparent stuff. In my early 50s, about so as you may or may not know, my daughter was very ill with a plethora of immunological problems, including very serious juvenile arthritis. And that was it just about killed her. It did destroy two of her joints and she had another 38 that were affected. And so she was always in a lot of pain. And we, I looked into the role the diet played in arthritis through the scientific literature for a couple of years and found two things and, and they were somewhat contradictory. And one was that there was no real evidence that any specific elements of diet had been linked to juvenile arthritis specifically, but and this was a major but. If people who are arthritic fasted completely, then their arthritic symptoms often disappeared. And so I thought that had something to do with the consequences of fasting. But then my daughter started to play, and my wife as well, very intensely with the diet. We went to a nutritionist who recommended an elimination diet at one point because we did notice that she would react. Yeah, arthritis is from certain inflammatory aspects of the diet. It can even just be the metabolic stress of uh, consuming carbs or sugars in some people if they have a candida overgrowth or if they don't have, you know, the right gut microbiome to handle it. And it could also just deplete your current vitamin stores. So whether it's dysbiosis or nutrient deficiencies, if you get arthritic symptoms, then you need to change the foods in your diet as well as probably supplement a few things, especially like vitamin K2 and magnesium, maybe vitamin C in some cases. To strawberries and oranges, we could, that, and within a day, her thumbs would swell or her toes would swell. And so we knew there were some things she was eating. Yeah, I mean, o oxalates, especially in berries and certain fruits, you know, oxalic acid, it gets stored in the joints and can crystallize, cause gout-like or arthritic symptoms. We had her tested for immunological reaction to food, but when we tested her, she showed a hyper reaction to virtually everything they tested her for. And we concluded at that point, well, there's no damn way she could be reacting to everything she's eating. Well, she went on this elimination diet and showed a bit of reduction in symptom, but the elimination diet made no sense. Like there was no rhyme or reason to what you could eat and what you couldn't eat. And so she started to experiment with more restricted diets and eventually settled on, discovered that if she only ate beef, and it turns out for her, it has to be beef that isn't aged, then all of her immunological symptoms disappear. Okay, so <laughs> if you're saying you can eat beef, but not aged beef, that means your liver and gut microbiome is completely ridiculously messed up. And if you're going to argue that the only foods you can eat is freshly slaughtered beef, 
eventually you're going to be at the point where you can't eat any beef because the body's inability to process histamine and amines in the beef is your gut microbiome health and your liver function. We know their gut health was messed up when they first started this diet. So the only thing that's able to process that histamine and the amines in the meat is their liver. And as soon as their liver goes, they're not going to be able to eat any meat because the histamine argument makes zero sense in the context of a high protein diet because protein is amines. Protein equals amines. If you think you have histamine intolerance, the first most logical reasonable thing in any diet would be to eliminate as much protein as possible because that is what releases the most histamine in the digestive tract. But then when they go to eat carbs, they can't do it because they don't have the right gut bacteria to digest the carbs. So it's a double-edged sword, basically band-aid until you get higher levels of liver dysfunction and you can't even follow carnivore anymore. But the most interesting question to me is what are the other foods out there that you might be able to consume or in the case of your daughter right like is it i'm obviously interested in that too but i what i have found because i have now and then tried to eat carbohydrates what i have found is that if i eat any of them i start to crave them intensely if mm. i don't eat them at all i they don't bother me assuming and this goes to the calorie restriction issue um one of the ways of maintaining yourself on a keto diet or a carnivore diet, let's say, is to make sure you're never hungry. And I eat a lot of meat and a lot of high fat meat. And so I'm never hungry. And I don't think that I'm calorie restricted at all because, you know, I can eat a la tomahawk steak sometimes in one sitting, which is about 35 ounces of meat. I never get hungry and I eat high fat carnivore snacks. too. <laughs> Does he realize what he's saying? I eat two pounds of meat every five hours, so I never get hungry. All right, if you said if you said like I can go for two days without eating and I don't have hunger signals, that's like okay, that doesn't make any sense. Two, what I found is lo as long as I'm never hungry, then I I am not inclined to cheat. But if I do try something like an introduction of carbohydrates, first of all, some of my symptoms come back right away, like the GERDs, and I start craving like mad. So, okay, so he basically has SIBO candida that instantly flares up when he eats carbohydrates. So his gut is definitely messed up. And the only reason that he can stick to this diet is because there's no carbs or sugars that are feeding those strains. So the longer he continues to follow this carnivore diet, the worse that liver function and that dysbiosis is going to get. And it's going to be more difficult to fix the problem when the organs go. The reason... I tell people not to do carnivore now. The reason I try to get people to follow a balanced diet of meat, grains, and probiotics is because the longer you follow these extreme diets, the harder it is going to be to dig yourself out of the hole. You know, how much crap, how much toxins are stored in your organs? You keep accumulating those over the length of these extreme diets. Well, so that's is, why is, 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 that's is, it, is it all carbohydrates or um, well, like, for example, if you introduce vegetables, uh, non-starchy vegetables, how, what happens both symptom wise and uh, craving wise? Yeah, well, for a while I was eating nothing but meat and greens, mm -hmm. but I still had some residual symptoms. My wife has a host of immunological problems that are somewhat low level and I have a different host and Michaela seemed to get all of them. And so, you know, maybe we're absurdly sensitive for reasons that wouldn't be true of other people, but it's definitely the case that I do better. And believe me, this isn't something I particularly want. It is the case that I do better if I just stick to beef. Now, could I have pork and chicken? Um, I had a very terrible bout of ill health and I'm disinclined to do a lot of experimentation, although I'll probably try again in the future sometime. But I do know that beef works. We've been hypothesizing internally in our family for what it's worth is that the reason that beef works and that other ruminant animals, bison, so forth, uh, um, lamb, goat, is because they're, they, they process what they eat through so many stomachs that by the time it is actually turned into meat, there's pretty much nothing else there. So it's, it's a very purified form of nutritional uh, uh, very, well, a very purified form of food. 
Now, like I said, that's anecdotal. And the digestive tract of the animal has has less to do with the quality of the meat as opposed to what the animal's eating. Conventional chicken and conventional pork feed has like a lot more soy and inflammatory elements and they get more antibiotics than, than the beef generally do. So the beef is slightly healthier and has a much better fatty acid ratio than the pork or the chicken. And if they were being completely truthfully honest, what they would say is all conventional grocery store meats are basically poison, even the other animal products like eggs and dairy. However, the beef is the least poisonous of all of them. And then when you switch over to actual high quality meat, you know, truly pasture raised grass fed, if, if the feed was the same for all the animals, the meat would be equally healthy. But because of profit and other things, farmers generally don't raise high quality pork, chicken and stuff. But since cattle are on grass and grass is free, it grows, we have access to that. This is partly why I don't talk about it, but I, but I can tell you after you've talked to a thousand people who tell you the same anecdote, you don't have an anecdote anymore, you have a hypothesis. And it's really quite something seeing these people who show me pictures of what they looked like a year ago and you know they were carrying around an extra person with them and they're still shell shocked by the transformation you know because it's really something to lose say 150 pounds in a year and so well um i don't know what to make of that i do know that it's been the diet has actually been rejuvenated. i don't know why this guy is putting up like random b-roll like random clips of stuff he could just show like carnivore stuff for my wife and I like its effect on muscle tone has to be seen to be believed and that's true even though both of us are 60 like my wife is in better shape from a musculature perspective now at six that's one of the main reasons this diet is way healthier than standard American diet and it will improve your body composition because most people are very deficient in quality protein so when you start eating this much beef the body is able to maintain you know a high quality amount of muscle mass you know Instead of people just chugging down sugar and pastries all day, which is deteriorating their lean body mass. 63 than she was when she was 40. And she was a very physically fit person who was exercising constantly and who was in pretty damn good shape. And to see that reverse rather than just, you know, stop deteriorating, I don't really know what to make of it. Well, that's it for the interview. I mean, <laughs> if it was really an interview and not him just reading a script someone else wrote for him. I know, but that goes back to what I said earlier about, you know, are they really following these diets? You know, is there any accountability? Who's watching them? And, you know, I've exposed these people before. Uh, there was a family and I figured out that they were lying. The 20 year carnivore frauds. You guys can search on YouTube, Frank Tefano, 20 year carnivore frauds. And the whole carnivore community was using these people as like a prop up for justifying the carnivore diet. Oh, they followed the carnivore diet for 20 years. Yet there was no real proof. They basically got this family to be actors to promote the carnivore lifestyle. And then when I exposed them, they disappeared off the face of the earth. They never mentioned them again. It's, a it's actually funny. You know, when you poke out their lies and expose them, they just completely cover it up and pretend it never happened. And... You know, that goes to the bigger picture of, you know, the elite, the people in control, you know, lying to and manipulating the public in order for them to make money and be able to live as, you know, the elite. Basically, any word that comes out of someone's mouth that has a large social media platform, it's questionable, it's questionable. And then, you know, when you do have an in-depth understanding of nutrition, you know, you know that a carnivore diet is not necessary or optimal any step of the way. You know, granted, it is better than what most people are eating in a standard American diet. It has the element of B vitamins, protein, and animal nutrition being important for overall health, but it misses the gut microbiome and the balanced part needed in grains, fiber, and probiotics. That, that's the real core missing and why people are basically using this Band-Aid of a diet. And then you have the big downside of the excessive nutrients and iron and things that will get stored in the liver and you'll develop mineral imbalances long-term on this diet. So 
Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I mean, I guess we leave it at that, you know. Uh, I know his daughter, Michaela, did get like cosmetic surgeries and, and different things. And maybe he got some stuff like that too and all different procedures. And who knows what else they're taking on the side. But uh, we'll, we'll keep it objective and I will be a gentleman for now. Although uh, the actions and greed of these people, <laughs> considering the actions and greed of these people, I should be the opposite of a gentleman. But thank you guys for joining today. Uh, if you could, as always, drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and check that notification bell. And if you guys go to frank com, you can support me through all of my interesting and unique business ideas. Uh, we just launched the Beef Butter uh, yesterday, and we always got new stuff coming for you guys to provide the highest quality and most affordable health and nutrition products. I'll see you guys soon. Mm -hmm.